Hello everybody, welcome back to another weekly market review for F45 Trading. Uh, this week we are looking at Monday, January the 20th to Friday, January the 24th, 2020. So we are now effectively in our third week of official trading for January for 2020. And Thus far, <clears throat> the markets have gone um, fairly close to plan um, with the deviation of a couple of days um, here or there, um, end of uh, a couple weeks ago to sort of early last week. Uh, we had uh, um, some fairly nice numbers come in and um, a couple of great trades that we've taken. Again, still keeping it fairly light. We're just starting to get back into the swing of things here for the year. So. Um, definitely not pushing the issue, but lots of opportunities out there. Uh, and now we're definitely starting to get into uh, sort of the ebb and flow of the trading season again. So um, I'm going to jump into the markets here right now. But before I do, of course, we're going to have a real quick look at Forex Factory. Now, keep in mind, January 20th, we do have a U.S. banking holiday. It is Martin Luther King Jr. Day in the U.S. So obviously all the major banks are going to be closed. So just keep that in mind. Uh, trading please and then we have the um, the yen uh, BOJ outlook report and the monetary policy now just keep in mind the yen is going to be pretty volatile going to into tomorrow and these are tentative so I don't know when they land I can't tell you if they're in the morning in the afternoon in the evening so if I were you I would probably not be trading any yen cross pairs uh, until this news is done. I do not look at the yen at all. I just want to come up and uh, show this to you guys just so you're aware. Make sure it's on your radar screen. If you are a yen trader, be aware that there's some major, major economic news about to come out tomorrow. And uh, again, the time of this recording, it is Sunday evening, um, just about uh, midnight New York time. And... <clears throat> There's going to be some pretty heavy-duty movement in the yen pairs, so just keep an eye on that. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, going into Tuesday, lots of medium impact news events. Again, we have another yen um, press conference. We have WEF annual meetings. We have medium impact news on the GBP, the euro, Canadian dollar, and the Australian dollar at the end of the day. Uh, so we should have some very moderate um, volatility injections on Tuesday, all starting at 4.30 a.m. New York time. Uh, leading right up until 8.30 a.m. New York time. So keep an eye on that. Nothing too major, though. I wouldn't suggest that there are going to be any landmines in there. Uh, going into Wednesday, we have a lot of Canadian dollar news because we are leading up to the Bank of Canada monetary policy um, rate statement. So, again, uh, it's interest rate months, obviously. So we've got the interest rate statement for the yen coming out on Monday, which is tomorrow, January 20th. Well, then we have the Canadian dollar uh, Bank of Canada interest rate statement coming out on Wednesday, the 22nd. So do not trade any Canadian dollar pairs uh, until, obviously, you know, this news has subsided and the volatility has uh, died down a little bit because this will jostle the market. Uh, and then later that day, we have obviously more Australian dollar news, some high impact uh, Australian dollar news that uh, I've got some ideas for the Australian dollar. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And then we've got going right into Thursday. The next one, we have uh, the European um, uh, monetary policy statement. So again, uh, lots of rate announcements this week, and we're all just getting started on this one here. Um, Euro, US, uh, sorry, Euro is going to come in on Thursday, so keep an eye on that one. Uh, so if you are going to trade the Euro this week, be sure to be trading it Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and be done trading it and wait until this news comes out on Thursday. This news is hitting at 7.45 a.m. New York time on Thursday, so make sure it's in your calendar if you are a Euro trader, uh, which I am, and uh, you've got it on there so you're not surprised when the market jumps, okay? And then going into Friday, lots more Euro news coming in with some uh, services, uh, PMI and uh, German flash services, etc., etc. So keep an eye, that's going to move the market a little bit. And then we've got um, ECB President Lagarde speaking at 4.30 a.m. to kick off the uh, New York Open on Friday. And we have um, 
pound sterling flash manufacturing, flash services, and the more Canadian dollar news. So, uh, basically, this is all void this week of any U.S. dollar news, so just keep that in mind. Uh, it's all focused specifically on either Canadian dollar, the yen, the euro, um, and, uh, well, we won't see too much movement in the pound uh, just because there's nothing too major on that one. So just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, it starts on Monday and it goes all the way till Thursday. And so whatever respective pair you trade, make sure you got that uh, noted. Now, talking into the charts here. Um, so just real briefly, I'm just going to hit some Forex pairs here. I'm going to talk about the US dollar, Euro cable, uh, Euro GBP, touch on US CAD, touch on US yen, uh, Australian dollar, and I'll wrap things up with crude oil. So I'm going to hopefully get this done and out of the way for you guys in about 10 minutes so you can go about your day. Now, US dollar, as mentioned, exactly according to plan, uh, when I did my Sunday review this time last week, what did I tell you guys? I said price was going to pop up above these highs here and potentially these highs. But before it does that, I want to see it roll over and then expand higher. And that's exactly what we did. This was Friday right here, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Now, um, now Friday from the previous week, Monday, Tuesday, um, all inside trading range and, and the Thursday here. So we had a good four solid days that were just chopping straight sideways, all inside trading days, nothing going on. They were building up positions. Again, I wanted to see them drop down into an area where we could um, go long US dollar or short foreign currency, obviously. And uh, that's exactly what happened. So it was a beautiful setup. Price came down. I did not, I told you guys, I did not want to see price go any lower than the highs of these candles in here. And we failed to get down there just ever so slightly. And we saw a big reaction happen. And um, there are some great trades that happened last week with our members. And if you guys want to take advantage of that, jump onto f45trading.com, uh, send me an email, uh, send me a DM on Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, I can give you our options there to take advantage of that. So you can also get in on some of these moves that we're talking about before they happen, uh, which our members did last week, which was awesome. Uh, and you can see here the result. Big uh, Thursday, big Friday, and Friday uh, coming in and eclipsing these highs in here from that uh, short-term consolidation. And we're just, just, just falling short here of taking out these highs. So these highs here come in at 97. Uh, do I have the right candle? Make sure I got the right candle. Uh, 97. 39 and five pipettes and this guy came in at uh, 97.40 sorry so uh, by 0.5 of a pipette it just ran that high there so really what we're going to see I believe going forward we're probably going to see them uh, come up a little bit higher now a couple of things on the horizon for the US dollar okay and for the US in general one uh, President Trump's impeachment hearing started on Friday of last week so the Senate is going to be deliberating on, on the hearing and deciding whether or not he should be impeached or not. So that is probably going to jostle the U.S. dollar around a little bit. Okay, It's major, major news, guys. Um, it basically adds to the stability or uh, decreases stability in the... Um, in the dollar and how comfortable investors feel with the president obviously potentially being removed or staying. So that is going to affect the price. So keep an eye on what's going to happen. Now it's going to happen quickly. They are planning a very short uh, deliberation period, a week, maybe two weeks on that. We'll know here soon. So I'll update, I'll give you guys an update uh, this time next week on that as well too um, for uh, everybody watching this for free and obviously all our members will get uh, daily updates on that. So uh, next thing is the US-Chinese trade wars. Uh, the U.S. struck two major deals and two major milestones with China on that one. They are pushing forward. So what that should do is it should strengthen the U.S. dollar. The more trade and the less tariffs, um, the better for product, the better for domestic um, uh, and imports and exports and everything uh, all abroad. So it should strengthen the dollar. So keep that in mind, too. Uh, going forward, we could see more great news coming on that side of things, them patching things up with China, and these uh, trade wars could be starting to come to a close here, so that should prop up the dollar. That being said, I'm still technically long-term bearish on U.S. dollar. Um, this time of year, historically, the U.S. dollar does falter a bit and get weaker. And now, we have had some weakness in dollar. As you can see here, we've had an obvious downtrend, okay? 
price has been running lower. We've been creating a lower highs and lower lows, okay? Now, we did come down to a major, major area right here, swept underneath these lows and a very strong rejection. I am anticipating higher price on US dollar, certainly higher than here and potentially even up into just a little bit higher than this area up into here, about 97.50. Now, if we breach 97.50, what's gonna happen is we're gonna keep firing up and we're gonna be going all the way up to uh, the 98 big figure range somewhere in this area right here that I have highlighted okay so really my line in the sand this week is going to be 97 50 so watch that number there if we go higher than that we're gonna run up into here and I think there's a very good possibility that that is going to happen. Again, there's a lot of news, uh, positive news on the US dollar front right now, okay? So just watch that. If, for whatever reason, we come down. Now, what we could do before we get up there is we could certainly come back down and rebalance all the way back down uh, to this little consolidation area in here where price consolidated for those four days. We could certainly want to come back down there, fill that range in, and then run higher. Certainly not out of the question. However, I think there's a strong likelihood that they'll probably just keep pushing this thing higher. Um, either way, by this time next week, I would imagine we'll probably be trading up into here somewhere. Okay, if not uh, 97.50 and above, we'll definitely hit 97.50 and probably want to capitulate lower. If, for whatever reason, they don't want to take it any higher, so maybe this Friday's high at 97.40, which we just took out this high here by 0.5 of a pipette, um, that could be it. That could be the liquidity run right there. They popped it up and then they're gonna turtle soup it lower and they're gonna run. Now, if that happens, we'll know it because they'll be taking this low out. So if as long as this low stays intact, we're gonna keep going higher. If this low here um, gets taken out, we're gonna trade lower. It's really that simple, okay? Moving on to Euro USD. So our target, obviously, um, on the week last week, we didn't get filled on the target yet. So I wanted, I'll zoom in here a little bit and I'll slide this guy, I don't need him. Uh, so what my target was on the downside was this low right there. As you can see, we just failed on Friday to get down there. Now, a couple of things, that's either gonna show uh, weakness, I'm, I'm sorry, strength on the Euro USD, which means that probably if the US dollar is going to push higher, we won't see deep runs uh, going lower on Euro USD because it's a little bit stronger. And then that could mean that once the US dollar does eventually roll over and go lower, then the Euro USD is going to make up for lost time and really get bullish. And if it really gets bullish, again, we've got these areas up here, which I'm going to have to start extending these out in time uh, because I. Uh, was expecting them to get hit on this bull run up in here. Still haven't been hit yet, but that's okay. So what I'm looking for here, again, just failed to get below. We can see the low here at uh, 110.86. Low on this candle here came in at 110. Give me the candle. If you can see at the bottom of my screen there, sometimes this thing, there it is. Um, 110. 85 so by one pip uh, this candle came in lower so we did not sweep any liquidity now we've got equal lows under here that I like to target and we have a low under here at the very least I think as long as if the US dollar does continue to push up um, we should get these lows here so I'm gonna put uh, borrow this guy and put that right there I think that could be the target now we're not talking a lot of pips here um, ooh, that's a really big tag let me calm that one down a little bit uh, 110.50, I'm going to say 110.50, I'd like a run below by at least 10 pips-ish, and uh, that would give us, uh, so we got a low of about 110.66 in here, so 110.50, yeah, 10, 15 pips, somewhere right in that area, right in here is kind of where I'm looking for price to run down, if we continue bullish on US dollar and Euro USD finally decides to take this low here, we should have no problem then running this low there. Now again, what we could see is them coming back up and trading a little bit higher into Monday, Tuesday, uh, but just watch out, like I say, Thursday. Whatever you do on Euro USD, do not trade this on Thursday before that news. Um, or if you are gonna trade it Thursday before the news, make sure you're either flat during the news, which means you don't have any positions on, or you have a massive stop loss on it because price will fluctuate. Uh, I can promise you on that one, okay? So looking for further downside, Euro USD. 
Uh, what changes that if price decides to uh, run higher than one? Let me slide this over. One ten fifty. If price runs above one eleven forty, then I believe we can switch our stance back to bullish. And I, I think we're going to see a low come in here and, and probably here before that happens. So, um, but keep again, you got to have the marks, uh, you got to have your charts marked up and, and these areas noted. Uh, bullish above 1140, bearish below 110. I'm sorry, bearish below into the target to 11050 is what I'm looking for personally this week. So, if that changes, um, I'll let my members know <laughs> because you guys won't know until next Sunday until I do the market review. Pound. Dollar. Uh, pound dollar really hasn't been doing a whole lot of anything. Uh, we had price run up last week. I'll zoom in one more time here. We had price run up into uh, the lows of these candles in here. You can see that banged up into that resistance in there. And then Friday sold off very, very sharply lower. Very small ranges for the cable though. Uh, Friday was the biggest range of the week and that one came in at about 110 pips or so. That was the biggest day since pretty much these two days back in here. So it's been a long time since the cable has actually moved a while uh, and we're really tightening up here. You can see price is really starting to jam down into a bit of a, you know, ascending triangle, so to speak. If you want to use that term, uh, I don't always, I'm just trying to draw this out to you guys so you can visually see it. But um, I believe, <clears throat> and I spoke to this the last time, the last Sunday, that my eyes were going to Euro GBP for a continuation higher there because what's going to happen there is it's going to lend to um, pound dollar weakness. Now, we certainly came down uh, on the pound and rebalanced off of these highs here. You see that? We came in, made a high, made a high, made a high, consolidated, and then we pushed out, out of that high, ran price rate up, and then a big fast rejection came back down and rebalanced off of these highs, and we had a nice little projection. Uh, sorry, a projection higher off of them. Um, both 350 pips, nice one, two, three, four, five day range. But since then we haven't done anything and that was the end of December. So really January's trading with the exception of, no, that was the 31st. So basically January's trading since um, the market opened in 2020 has been very, very weak on cable. I am expecting weaker prices. <clears throat> I know these lows came in here uh, and jam back down uh, into this consolidation level here. But uh, I'll be honest with you, I think that um, just if the US dollar shows a little more strength, then we could be trading lower under here and possibly under here. Um, but right now, cable, it is consolidating. It's not really doing anything. So m my thoughts are I'm going to be watching the Euro USD a little bit more. Uh, but as long as, if we don't breach this low, so you see this low here, if we draw this out in time here, and if we fail to get lower than here and price keeps going around and then the US dollar starts to drop, that's going to be a green light to get long on um, on GBP USD. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Watch this low here and see what we do. If we're going to take out this low here, um, then we're probably going to run down for this guy here. So, you know, watch those two, obviously. But um, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I want to see how this shapes up this week. But so far for the month, we've been softer. I'm going to expect a little bit more con to continue, especially if US dollar wants to push up into here. Again, like I say, um, it should push the uh, GBP USD lower. Uh, but so far, we're just sort of holding off of these uh, December lows for the time being. So we're going to keep watching this one. I'm not going to offer any options on this guy yet, other than the fact that... Um, uh, I'm watching this low and this low here, okay? That's really all I can give you right now. Um, reason being, like I say, there's a range in Euro GBP that I believe it wants to reach for up into, and you see we made a couple equal highs right here. Um, I believe what we're going to see doing, uh, or happening, excuse me, is this price is going to start pushing straight up into here. And once we take out that, and I apologize, my chart is a little messy right now. I'll fix that up for you guys. Uh, but I think we have a good chance of pushing up higher, running these highs in here, and uh, and then rebalancing. Now, I'm not suggesting Euro GBP is going to start shooting straight back up. Uh, but again, if you guys will notice, right, we are in a consolidation range and we just ran those lows there. So what happens in a consolidation when price gets run lower? Uh, it rejects and starts to rebound and run higher. So that's, again, why I'm expecting price to run a little bit higher on um, Euro GBP, 
but if that goes higher it will push um, GBP USD lower okay so just keep that in mind and that's where I'm looking for potentially this low to get run out hasn't done it yet doesn't want to look like it's doing it anytime soon but and that's why we're seeing consolidation here so that's why I'm watching this low uh, and that could be a nice little run as well too and I'm not saying it's going to continue lower there but that's 100 pips from our current location uh, if price fails to get above 130.40 well you know what let's say 130.50 if price fails to get above 130.50 it's going to go lower and then I'm going to target this low here uh, if we manage to trade above 130.50 then we're probably just going to keep staying in this consolidation range for the next little while okay uh, moving along, US CAD, um, uh, same thing. We've got a monetary policy <clears throat> release coming out on, I believe it was Wednesday, was it not? Yes. Canadian dollar, Bank of Canada rate statement on Wednesday at 10 a.m. New York time. So um, I am going to hold off my commentary on US CAD until that happens. So if there's any US CAD traders out there, Canadian cross uh, pair traders, I apologize. Um, you'll have to wait for my thoughts on this one. I, I'm not a super big fan of US CAD right now, and the main reason is just because of this price range that it's been in. Um, been just brutal to watch, and I really haven't had um, uh, any interest in trading it and, and making long term calls just because it's just been so choppy and ugly. Like, look at the month of August. That's terrible. You know, month of September wasn't any better, and we had a nice drop into October, uh, which we definitely got advantage, uh, took advantage of. But then we saw price just kind of reverse, and I thought we were going to get these lows, and then just kind of meander back up, failed to get in there, and then we got short on a couple of trades in December. Um, but really, don't like it. And now we've just been sitting sideways again for the past um, two, four, six, seven days. So. Uh, like I say, I'm going to hold off and I want to wait for the monetary policy uh, to come out. I, the Bank of Canada, I believe, is not forecasted to increase its rates. So that being the case, <clears throat> if we don't see an increase in rates, uh, we should finally start to get back in line with what the U.S. dollar is doing, uh, which means we'll probably see price push up into here. And I, I do have some targets on U.S. CAD that I'm looking at, uh, mainly the 131.30 levels. Uh, so it's about 90 pips away from now, but I'm not going to say that we're definitely going to get there um, Just depending on what they're going to do So I want to see the monetary policy come out before I make a call on that But if you're joining us here in the uh, the free version, I'll give you my thoughts on it next Sunday I'll put a pin in it until then, okay? Uh, US yen again um, Talked about these highs here before it happened last week and we saw Monday right out of the gate Boom, popped up, ran all those highs, and we can, are can seeing cons, continuation to the upside now. I believe you see this giant gap right in here that there's a very good chance that 110.90s, 110.80s, uh, certainly this high right here coming in at 110.65 is going to get traded to. So that's going to be my target to the upside. As long as we see continuation to the upside of the U.S. dollar, U.S. yen should keep pushing higher. Um, what changes that if we break down below this level, this line right here? See these highs in here? If we come back down below that and close on the daily lower than that, um, then I'm going to be targeting lower prices. But I believe for yen, for this week anyway, we're going to see them run higher. But that being said, but, 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 don't forget tomorrow, Monday, yen, Bank of Japan monetary statement. Um, whether they, I haven't even looked at yen either, so I don't know if they're increasing it or decreasing it. I apologize, guys. I don't do a lot of following on the yen. I know there are some of you yen traders out there, so I want to try putting the commentary in here for you. Um, but I don't know what they're going to do uh, monetary policy wise, so I'd have to look into that. But I'm, I'm projecting that they're going to continue higher just with what we've talked about thus far and some other factors. Um, that I can't discuss in the free version here, but I believe we're going to see 110s uh, for sure. Uh, sorry, 110.90s for sure before the end of the week is up, and possibly even tomorrow if they decide to shoot this thing straight up, they could do this tomorrow during that monetary policy statement, and um, and that range would be filled. So, not saying that's going to happen, of course. Uh, I'm just saying that if uh, they come lower than this line here, I'm going to be bearish. If they stay above this here, I'm going to be bullish. That's really I'm 
try to keep this very, very simple for everybody. Uh, finally, on the Forex front, Australian dollar, Aussie, AUD, USD. Um, had a great uh, week on Aussie last week. We saw price run all these highs in here and a big fast capitulation lower. A very brief retracement into the area that I told you guys. I said I didn't want to see it go any higher than this range here. It didn't. It traded into it just briefly and a big fat rejection. Um, we actually all, uh, all of our um, members, we all got in. Um, on the not the exact high of the candle but very close to it on a run above price came up and rejected and uh, we're all sitting on a great position uh, on US uh, sorry Aussie dollar so uh, again just another reason why you should probably check us out at f45trading.com our chat room or uh, our signals area because we got had some great setups last week and I'm looking for great setups again this week um, I believe what we're going to see again, uh, I want to see these lows here taken out on Australian dollar right here. I want to see these lows gone, and I want to see these lows gone. Now, whether or not we get underneath these lows, I do not know yet. So that will depend on what the U.S. dollar is going to do, but I believe by the end of this week. And I was hoping that last week we would have seen them come under these lows. We're still waiting for that to happen. Um, but my target on this week is still going to be, I'm going to keep that at uh, one, uh, sorry, at 68.40 uh, on the low. Possibly even lower than that if we really get some movement downwards, okay? Uh, so that's it for Forex. Um, sorry, and uh, guys, what changes this? If we start trading higher uh, than really in here, sorry, I don't know if you can hear that, my printer is doing a maintenance thing and cycling all of its wheels and everything, cleaning itself out. Um, <clears throat> as long as price doesn't go above this line right here, I think we're going to be good to go um, for continuation lower on Aussie. And that comes in at 69.05. So we're currently at 68.85. Um, as long as price stays below that level there, I believe there's a very good chance that we're going to see this thing continue to fall off. So that's what I'm going to be watching for this week. And finally, crude oil. Look at the bounce on crude oil that we had. Price came down and turned around in an area that I don't know why it turned around in. Um, you can see lots of confluence at this 58.20 level. How many times price reacted off of that level? But we came straight, to, and I was looking at that level and seeing if crude was going to hold off at it. It didn't. It ran right through it once, twice, three, four times ran this low here briefly and then rejected and now we've gapped up it's sunday trading now and we've gapped up so uh, i'll be honest with you folks i don't like the what i'm seeing on crude oil right now it's messy 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 um yes we certainly are in an uptrend i mean definitely you can see that there however we did take a major high out uh, a couple of major highs actually just failed to get above uh this high here but took out this high took out that high and a big fat rejection um, ensued right afterwards. So very similar to this guy here. Uh, so that being said, crude oil is still a little, little bit of a mess. By all means, I would imagine what's going to happen is probably this same price fractal in here is going to expand itself out into here. Um, I would not necessarily be taking any positions above 61.10. In my opinion, I believe that could be maybe 61, uh, maybe 62, I should say. Get that level, pretty close. So I wouldn't be looking anything higher than this for now. Certainly we could see price trade up there this week. Um, my target would be mainly 61, but I, I think as long as everything stays above, uh, you see how we gapped up in here? As long as we stay above, um, the opening for Friday, and I'll go down to an hourly chart, and you can see that in here. Oops, let me zoom in a little bit better. Uh, so price opened up on Friday down here. As long as we stay above that, I think we should be continuing to stay bullish. But if we lose that, then uh, they're going to come down, sweep this low, and possibly these lows here. Uh, I just don't have a lot of faith in crude oil being super bullish right now. The market's a little finicky. Um, however, that being said, uh, typically the first quarter of the year, crude oil is very, very bullish. I just hope what we haven't seen, uh, um, I just hope we haven't seen an interim high here that's going to stay 
uh, for a while, you, you know, um, but this was a pretty big price push up here. So uh, just watching right now, crude oil is still just getting started off for the year. So don't go crazy on it. Let's wait. There's much better times to trade crude oil. Um, <clears throat> you know, as you can see, 2019 was a bit of an interesting year. But, you know, if we can start getting into these runs like this again, or even these runs here, that's very easy to trade. A run like this, that's easy to trade. This in here is really miserable to trade. So I haven't been doing a lot of crude oil trading um, to the latter half of 2019. And, uh, and obviously, after all of the uh, Middle Eastern events happening, I haven't touched it since uh, any of that stuff. So that's why I'm a little bit hesitant on it. If you are a crude oil trader, just maybe hold the pin for a little bit there. Uh, before you throw that grenade out and um, and wait for this market to develop a little bit. So uh, anyway, that is it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll be back again for another free review next Sunday, same time, same place. You can watch for that, and I will make sure I post this link everywhere uh, for you guys to rejoin. Make sure you hit subscribe down here in the bottom right-hand corner if you haven't done so. And if you want to take a look at our member options, go ahead and visit us at f45trading.com. Uh, send me an email to uh, on my Twitter, at uh, f45trading. And I'd be more than happy to uh, get back to you and um, give you all of our options there for you guys to take advantage of. So uh, if you are a member, I appreciate you guys watching again. And we will see you in the chat room tomorrow bright and early. Have yourself a great day. Uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for watching.